what's up. If you haven't heard of it, a chopped cheese is a classic New York bodega sandwich that combines all of the best attributes of all of the world's best sandwiches. Just like anything else that comes off the griddle at a bodega, a chopped cheese is quick, cheap, easy to make, and tastes delicious. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make one. To get started, we'll need some beef. Specifically, I've got some 90-10 ground beef here. For burgers, I tend to lean towards a lean to fat ratio that's closer to 80-20, but when I was developing this recipe, the 80-20 ground beef was just straight up greasy. Add in the fact that this chopped cheese sandwich is gonna have four total slices of cheese on it, plus mayo, and all of a sudden, 90-10 has more than enough fat going on. For one sandwich, I'll portion out eight ounces of this 90-10 ground beef, or roughly 225 grams worth. Next, to get the beef ready for the pan, I'll work it with my hands a little bit to get the myosin protein inside linked up so the beef is just a little bit stickier. That's going to allow me to shape this meat into something that's roughly approximate to a burger patty. A quick slap back and forth now to spread it out and there we go. This flatter patty shape is gonna take on a much better crustier sear than just loose crumbly ground beef wood. Next, I'll scoot this beef off to the side while I get everything else prepped up. That means preheating my oven to 400F, then grabbing a heavy bottom saute pan and dropping that on the stove to preheat. I'm using a 12 inch cast iron here because that's the closest thing that I have to a restaurant griddle, but anything that can take high heat will work. While that gets hot, let's take a look at the garnishes and condiments that we need to have ready for the sandwich. On the tray here, I've got some shredded iceberg lettuce for me, the finer the shred, the better, and make sure yours is nice and cold so that it can bring a crunchy, icy contrast to this hot, beefy sandwich. For one chopped cheese, we'll need about a cup's worth of shredded iceberg. Next, we need some juicy, but probably out of season slicing tomatoes. Look, the bodega version isn't rockin' farmer's market tomatoes, you guys, and that version is amazing. Of course, if you have a nice tomato on hand, put it to use, but in general, the tomatoes on the sandwich just need to bring a little bit of moisture and just a touch of acidity, so commodity slicers that are aren't super ripe are more than good enough. I prefer to slice mine pretty thin as you can see so that they don't sog up the sandwich and just kind of blend into the background. Next, I need some very thinly sliced or almost shaved white onions. I'm gonna be taking an Oklahoma onion burger approach with these things, meaning that they're gonna get steamed and roasted alongside the beef in the pan, so thinner is better. For one sandwich, I'll need a few strong pinches worth, or about 20 to 30 grams. To lube up this sandwich and to keep things glued together, as always, I've got some mayonnaise here. But to spice it up, I've combined a good long squirt of it, or about a quarter cup's worth, with two garlic cloves that I've smashed through my garlic press. I'll stir that in, and now we've got a mayo for this sandwich that brings a little bit more vibe than just plain white straight out the bottle. The raw garlic in there really stands out and brings a piquant aromatic heat that harmonizes with the melty cheesy meat in a profound way. Don't skip it, you guys. Now, that's all the prep. The rest is just gathering stuff. Next, we're gonna need some Montreal steak seasoning set aside. Most bodegas or other restaurants that cook a lot of their food on a flat top, like Mexican restaurants, usually have something similar to this nearby to shake on all of the stuff that hits the griddle. If it's not steak seasoning, it's Lawry seasoning salt or some variation. And in general, not just for this sandwich, I highly recommend keeping some salty meat shake nearby. Next, to double down on the deli sub inspiration here, I've got some pepper and chini rings. That's not classic bodega as far as I know, but Bri loves his chinis and their spicy brininess makes this sandwich really special. For the cheese part of this chopped cheese, I've got two slices of two types of cheese. The first is the classic gooey processed American cheese. I like that because it kind of makes a sauce for the sandwich as it melts, and I really wouldn't recommend switching this out for a fancy, quote, real cheese. The second cheese is a mild, thinly sliced provolone cheese. This brings a little bit more flavor than American cheese and a nice bit of aesthetically pleasing cheese pull. Sub in Munster or Swiss if you want a little bit more funk. For the bread, there are two classic options. The first is a hoagie or hero roll, and the second is a classic crusty Kaiser roll. Texturally, both breads are pretty similar, but the Kaiser is a touch sweeter and softer, and of course, eats more like a traditional burger bun, and that's not what I'm here for. For me, the core joy of this sandwich is the weirdness that ensues when you build something cheeseburger-like on a submarine sandwich vehicle. The crusty hoagie gives you an entirely different textural experience than a burger bun, and it's surprisingly delightful. If you guys wanna make your own hoagies from scratch, I'll link to a few videos in the description below that show you how to do just that. To get this hoagie ready for the chopped cheese filling, I'll cut it in half, leaving one side still attached. Then I'll just pull a little bit of the interior bread out of each side 
wide so that I can make room for all eight ounces of my cheesy meat and the shreddice and tomato and all of the condiments. Without this loss of the middle, you'll get tearing and the sandwich will be too stuffed and fall apart. Next, I wanna mention that I'm not doing this step just yet, but when it's go time, I'm gonna be reheating this hoagie in my 400F oven to get it crisped back up. Untoasted bread here leads to a chewy, soft Jimmy John's-like experience. And for me, you might as well eat it on a burger bun at that point. Once I've got all my mise en place sorted out here, I'm gonna make sure to turn my hood vent on because anytime you're cooking something that's close to a hamburger inside, it's gonna get smoky. Now, once my cast iron pan is nice and ripping hot over high heat, I'm gonna add in a good long squeezer of high smoke point oil. And then once that's hot, in goes my not a burger patty. Right away, I'll jump into the pan and give this burger a smush to make sure as much of the surface area is touching the hot pan as possible. I'm not really trying to give it a smash per se. There's there's no need to spread this out like you would for a smash burger, but giving it some downward force rewards you with a very crusty, well-browned bottom side. By the way, I love this sturdy stainless steel spatula for this task. This is exactly what they would use at a bodega or just a griddle style restaurant to smush meat and cook it more evenly and get more caramelization. This was like eight bucks online and I highly recommend it. Once the patty is in full contact with the pan, I'll come back and give the backside a generous pinch of my Montreal steak seasoning and then I'll lay down a heavy dose of the shaved onions that we made before. Maybe two dozen slices or so. And from there, I'll let this patty continue to sear for another 45 seconds to a minute while I thank Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Thrive Market stocks most of, if not all of the fancy high quality grocery products that Lauren and I buy on a weekly basis. For example, these delicious smoked oysters or our favorite brand of gluten-free pasta. As a member, all of these products actually were less expensive than they were at the store. But if I did find them cheaper, Thrive will actually match the price. So far, I've saved over $70 between my first two orders, which already easily covers the cost of the $60 annual membership. With Thrive, aside from food, you can order supplements, wine, personal care items, or stuff like this shampoo. Lauren and I saved four bucks on this through Thrive Market. When shopping, you can filter products by diet, product type, or brand, which makes really quick work of your weekly grocery run, especially if you follow a specific diet or a lifestyle. So if you're like me and like saving money, click the link in my description below or go to thrivemarket.com slash Brian Lagerstrom to get 30% off your first order, plus a free gift worth up to 60 bucks. Orders over $49 are always shipped for free and use carbon neutral shipping. Thank you, Thrive Market. After about a minute, I'll come back and check the bottom side to see how my sear's looking. That's deeply golden brown and getting crusty, so I'll flip over the patty onto the onions, and they're gonna get all roasty and caramelized under there while we finish cooking this beef. Now, for the chopped part of this entire chopped cheese, using my sturdy metal spatula, I'm gonna come back and basically slice this patty thinly a bunch of times. I wanna break this down into something that resembles ground beef again, so I'm gonna use this spatula to cut every quarter inch or so until it's all chopped up. This is going to give us that loose meat texture that we're looking for, and when you combine that with melty cheese, it's going to make something that's really delicious, weird, and pretty unique. Once this meat is well broken down, I'll hit it with another strong dose of steak seasoning, or Lawry's, if that's your truth, and from there, I'll give the meat another minute or so to take on even more dark, crusty color. After two and a half minutes of searing and chopping, the meat and the onions inside of it are looking well browned and cooked through, so I'll gather it all up into a pile and then drop on two slices of American cheese. Behind that, two slices of mild provolone. Make sure the provolone is sliced thin so that it melts quickly. Now off heat, I'll let this coast for 20 seconds or so, or however long it takes for the cheese to lose its form and drizzle itself into all those crags and crevices between the beef. Now I'll carefully lift this to get as much of the cheesy chopped meat out of the pan as I can at one time, then I'll move it over to my lightly toasted hoagie bun. By the way, before I drop this meat, I spread one tablespoon of garlic mayo on either side of this toasted bun. Next, two thick handfuls of cold, finely shredded iceberg go down. I'll follow that with a dozen or so pepper and chain doggies, then three thin slices of lame, juicy, out of season tomatoes, then a nice sprinkle of steak seasoning on top of those to bring some sparkle, then a good long squeezer of ketchup to bring a little bit more moisture and a little bit of sweetness to tie up the flavor memories of hamburger. And most importantly, to finish this, I'm gonna wrap it very tightly with foil or parchment wrap. Deli sandwiches in general, whether hot or cold, are a total mess to eat without first being thoughtfully repacked in wrapping. So don't skip this step. And once this Sammy is all snugged up, it's time for a little slice and a cross section. Oh my God. You guys, 
This is some kind of super sandwich. It's gooey like a cheese stick, it's salty and crunchy and wet like a sub, and it's got the cheesy ketchupy beef combo that strictly reminds you of a cheeseburger. The crunchy, chewy bread brings a whole new dimension of both flavor and texture that, in short, is a revelation to the senses. It's familiar and new all at the same time, and best of all, it only takes like 15 minutes to make one of these things. Mmm! You got it. I love it, and I think you will too, and I think you should try it soon. Let's eat this thing. As a reminder, click the link in my description below to get 30% off your first order and a free gift when you join Thrive Market today.